El Rufai criticizes hostility against Nigerians which have been attacked in the country. Choir State is, is back in the news again with members of two factions of the party violently clapping at the registration exercise. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Pong. Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai has condemned the unlawful eviction of Nigerians from part of the country. And he also challenged state governors to stop this trend. Well, he was live on his Facebook yesterday as he spoke about this. Let's take a look. The government of Kaduna State notes with great concern video clips circulating on social media platforms like WhatsApp in which citizens of a particular ethnicity are being massacred and their properties destroyed in parts of Nigeria. This is coming amidst avoidable rhetoric, frenzied ethnic profiling and unlawful eviction of citizens from their places of domicile. Many citizens of Kaduna State have, have reached out to me as their governor to confirm the authenticity of these video clips. Some allege that these incidents have the support of the leaders of the places where attacks have occurred. While I'm unable to confirm the authenticity of the video clips, their impact on the peaceful coexistence of our people is a source of concern. On behalf of the government of Kaduna State, I call on all Nigerians living in our state to respect law and order and the rights of all citizens to live in peace and security wherever they reside or work. I appeal to my colleagues governing other states in our country to make similar statements and disavow these attacks and massacres. We must avoid anarchy and vigorously promote the rule of law and the right of all citizens to life, liberty and livelihoods wherever they choose to reside. Elected and appointed leaders across the country must act on their constitutional obligations to protect all citizens, uphold order and contribute to a climate for peaceful resolution of all issues. In Kaduna State, we are learning from decades of unfortunate and needless experiences. We have faced the tragic manifestations of the indigenous satellite divide. This has been compounded by criminal activities that often have fatal consequences. But the victims of criminal actions like banditry and kidnapping in our state cut across all ethnic and religious groups. We have resisted the attempt to tar all members of any ethnic group for the criminal actions of some of their members. At all times, our government has upheld the right of every citizen to live in peace and pursue legitimate livelihoods wherever they choose. This is why we ordered the arrest of persons who issued an unlawful eviction notice to our citizens of a certain ethnicity in 2017. The impunity and calculated disregard for a common humanity that prompted such irresponsible rhetoric is sadly at play again. The genuine fears felt by people across the country for their safety and security imposes a responsibility on all leaders to ensure that these anxieties are assuaged and urgent steps taken to relieve human misery and stop the criminal actions that menace our citizens and their property. This should be the top priority. Well, joining us via telephone to have this conversation is legal practitioner Liboris Oshoma and political technocrat Dayo Kayeri. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good day. Nice having me. Great, great, great. Thank you. Well, I'm going to start with you, Liboros. The crisis between the farmers and um, the herders' communities. Um, has been going on for so long. I mean, it's just recently um, doubling up here in the Southwest. Do you think it's taking a political dimension of sorts? Long ago, it has taken a political dimension of sorts. And our politicians can um, play politics with it at will. When it's convenient for them, they call it. When it's not convenient for them, they put the other way. And at some point, they, they even want the idea of concentrating criminality. And so, just before the term of the 2019 election, they are already checking for the 2020 elections and positions. So, to that extent, you hear them now 
even die hard the promoters of violence will suddenly become the apostles of peace. Uh, it is uh, only uh, students, uh, people that are not students of history, that will die in all of these uh, uh, modern day apostles are born against the mission of peace. It is good to to promote and discuss peace. It would have been a good idea if they had lived by the, the tenet of what they are suddenly preaching now. So I do not, I, I do good for governments like Jerusalem has just done, address the state. But uh, it shouldn't be about address, it should be about action. Mm. The action, the body language, the, the uh, uh, paraphernalia of what they should be declared by a government collaboration with the federal government. To show seriousness of the fact of government security. So, otherwise, all your words will amount to nothing if your action speaks otherwise. And then, the man who buys the action, he can now have speak otherwise. He has spoken loudly otherwise of what he's saying now. And, and, to, and, to and talking about actions, and so talking Yeah, talking about actions, Liboris. Um, there, there has been a governor in the Southwest that had taken action, which is the Ondo state government, but of course that action was quickly rebuffed by the federal government. In fact, they criticized that, um, that action um, very swiftly, swift, more faster than anything else. Uh, again, other states have been called to take that same kind of action, but this is the action that the likes of El Rufai is also saying um, you know, it's not necessarily the right path to toe. So, yes, it's okay to have these conversations, but we need actions. When we then have what someone the acting, outcome? there seems to be a criticism coming from the federal government. What is the right path? Let's tell let's ourselves the truth. Uh, the body language of this government, the current is that president has been condoning, you know, this criminality, uh, paraded, uh, or that befell us, since we had um, killers parading as henchmen who had become emboldened by the lackadaisical like, attitude and silence of the government, then it had to be natural. The president uh, deployed the IG of police to Nasarawa, and he didn't go. It happened in Benway. The president said uh, that they should live peacefully with their neighbor, that would, uh, wouldn't they rather concede land? For so these people that uh, that in Joe. It happened in Kajure in uh, in uh, Kaduna State. And even at some point, the man said he had to pay to our headsmen who cut on their head so that they would stop the killing. If you remember, there was a time even we had a meeting with some of these people in the North, they only in the men hmm. on finding peace. What other nations, serious minded nations, do is to you have the criminality of the law to deal with criminality. If you believe that these people are elements who are not genuine headsmen, who are bandits, who are militias, who are wrecking havoc on defenseless farmers, mm -hmm. how do you now tell the defenseless farmers to live peacefully or tell a governor to learn to accommodate killers in his state? That is not a recipe for peace. That is a recipe for further chaos because it will embolden the criminals. Because when a state is helpless, it begins to hurt criminals to lay down their hands. That is what we did in the Niger Delta. And today, today, if nothing has come the end of the day in that area, that is what we are doing now also in the north. Mm. So, what is happening now? Like, I don't see that. Boys were armed by the government. And so <laughs> now they are not good. Government cannot rein them in. And so what do they do? They seem to be begging them to, to go and they are kept the rest of you live peacefully with them. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Liboris, we're having issues with your line. Uh, your line seems to be going in and out, so we would um, go to Mr. Kayade now. Um, 
Mr. Kaida, these allegations of herdsmen attacking women and farmers in their farms ha has been existing. But why do you think it's coming up now more every single day? There's one report. I mean, I just saw a video of women protesting in the Niger Delta about these herders who are also coming to destroy their farms. Do you think, um, I mean, because, I mean, we have the 2023 presidency uh, just around the corner. Could this be um, heating up the policy because 2023 is in view? Uh, yeah, you see, number one, I don't even know why L5 is now just uh, reading out the uh, Royal Act at this time. You're going to remember that uh, sometimes early last year, a lot of people were killed in Southern Kaduna. What he did to them till now? Has he been able to arrest anybody? Now, going from there, if you look at the P2015 issue, this is the same LFI that was affecting the, the, the government of the day that if APC did not win that election, that they're going to see a lot of blood on the streets and here and there. I don't know whether you are able to see, I mean, to read uh, Baraji's statement in the last few days. Baraji was the one that led uh, the NPDP, that is the new PDP there, to join the APC. In categorically stated, in this uh, press conference, that in one APC there, not to bring in Fulani, ex Fulani killers from Putajalon, from uh, Mali, from uh, Nigeria, from everywhere. Is it because when the problem starts, they will not be able to handle it. But I just said it. All right? Yeah. So, then let us also ask El Fine. The people he went to settle in charge, the bandits he went to settle in charge, uh, uh, yeah, before the last, he said it. Who are the people he went to settle? To what extent have we been able to arrest these bandits? Is it because of what Baraja said? That they are the ones that bring them in, that brought them in? Not fully really aware that if any one of them is being arrested and then being prosecuted, they will now see things as a guy who brought them to the country. If you remember, there was a problem I mentioned it. I said, let the president himself change the service chiefs a thousand and one times. If the president refused to change his philosophy and his, and his uh, 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 belief uh, as regards his uh, uh, criminals, we will keep on having them in our midst. Is this, is this a and then president? we can see so I, many I, things I'm, now I'm, so, I'm, now. I'm sorry to speak over you, Mr. Kayede, but is this a President Buhari problem or it's a problem of rogue herders who, according to certain people, I'd like to quote the Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abubakar, saying that these people are outsiders. They're not necessarily Nigerians. Is this really a exactly. Buhari problem? I, I mean, I know he's the president and the box stops at his table, but is this his problem? Should he Thank be blamed for, for all of that this? Issue. Thank you for bringing me that issue. The, the era of Sokoto said it. That these bandits are not Nigerian. But then Baraja now confirmed it. That during the uh, 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 in preparation for 2015 elections, the, the people in everything brought these people in, which is the present Allegedly. government. Allegedly. Didn't That's give us more, reason for why, that. more reason why, till today, the government has not been able to prosecute any one of them. More reason why those that were arrested all the time, they said, okay, you have rejected them, you have uh, fine-tuned them, let us send them back to society. Hmm. More reason again, when the Americans came to come and help us here, they said they couldn't stay because they don't know how the information has been linked up to the enemies. And they left. Okay. The more reason why people have been telling them to use our Niger contract to trace the movement of these people, they have not been using it. Because okay. how can how can about three hundred uh, uh, motorcyclists carry three people with guns without traverse over hundred kilometers into our boundary, into our territory, 
and then go and uh, 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 operate, kidnap some people, and still leave without anybody touching let's them. Bring, let's bring back the conversation. I'm talking about the recent, the recent yes, kidnap. Yes, Mr. Kaede. Let, 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 the I'm sorry, was Mr. Mr. Kaede. Let, let's bring the conversation back to farmers and heritage. Let's not go to Boko Haram. That's a story for another day. But I'll go back to Laboris here. Um, some, uh, Laboris, some say that this quit notice by um, Iboho and uh, others to the Fulani community in the West is trying to attack the Tinubu Northern Alliance. Do you agree with this? Is there any iota of truth to this? Uh, Liboros, can you hear me? I think that we lost Liboros. But let's go to Mr. Kayade. Mr. Kayade, are you, are you there? Did you hear the question? Yeah, you are, you are talking about what happened in the Igongo? Yes. As, as we got uh, Oseo and all the like, Igongo, I mean, Sunday Igongo, yeah, and all that. Yes. Now, yes. listen to this. Over the years, the full and the Bororo have been attacking those people. And I have been saying it. Look, when we were growing up, the full and the Bororo that we we grew up to know they are friendly people. How come these days you now see full and is changing to become so brutal and animalistic? And I said it, these are not Nigerian full and is. These are mercenaries that have come to perhaps fulfill some people's agenda. And when the government cannot cannot uh, live by the constitution towards providing security for people, I would like to... they cannot provide water now. Everybody is not having a bowl. They cannot provide light. Everybody is not having a, a generator. So somebody now stood up. Let me also give you security. Okay, I want to ask, uh -huh. what kind so of agenda, you... Mr. Kayede, what kind of agenda would anybody, any politician in this country have that would pay missionaries to kill its people, the same people they would want to vote for them, so that they could secure an office? What kind of agenda would that be, killing your own people because you want to get into power? I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to understand why anybody would do that. That Igbo uh, is looking for power. How do you... What power is he looking for? If he has been there for long, if you trace his history, he was with them in Bodakeke during the Bodakeke fight. It's not today that uh, these people have been terrorizing the uh, uh, Yoruba people. But Yoruba people are now saying, enough is enough. And he decided to stand up. So, one was the people left by that. He has not taken anybody's position. He's not saying he wants to become a number. He's not saying he wants to become a governor. Now that tried to contest for senator. I even had him say he saw, uh, when he was talking to Baba the other before the Baba before Baba the food debut. That I cannot contest a local government uh, chairman because uh, he cannot speak English. Uh, so, but that is that to stand up now to defend these people. So once they want to climb me that. Okay, but I asked a very specific question because of what you started with. You said that there are people who have an agenda. And that's why they brought in this mercenaries. And I'm wondering what agenda would that that would be, you know, in killing your own people. If you have some form of, uh, uh, you want to run for an office, why would you want to kill the same people you would need at the end of the day to vote for you? Which agenda will it be having that you wouldn't have uh, prosecuted during the during the time of apartheid who was controlling uh, by the politics? I don't know because uh, for me, I don't, I don't know his mind. When I have an agenda, I don't have an agenda. All I, all I can say is this guy has stood up to defend his people, period. Whatever agenda is now having, if, if the Yoruba people now see him as somebody who they can trust, they can trust him with more powers. Then what is also wrong in that? Is okay. he not a human being? Okay. In clear terms, I'll ask again, do you think that all of that which is happening in the Southwest, um, will, will it affect Asiwaju's presidential ambitions?
Can you hear me, Mr. Kayade? Yeah, I have somebody to apply that. Can you repeat your question? Please? Somebody to apply so I'm, I'm asking, what do you think yes. about this, all of this that's happening? Do you think it will affect uh, Tinubu's presidential ambitions? Because there are people who are saying uh, that all uh, of the things that are happening is, you know, trying to stop him from his presidential bid. To stop who? To stop who? Tinubu. Tinubu. To stop, to stop Tinubu? No, listen. People are just speculating. <laughs> Tinubu himself has not even come out that he's going to contest for presidency. <laughs> by the time the time he comes out, so he should be by himself. I want to contest. And then, then you can now start for that speculation. Okay, look at this. Look at this. The 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 ATLA people, they are saying it's Tinubu that is uh, that is trying to foment trouble so that they can send the world in full and then the Yoruba people will now trust him. The Yoruba people are now saying it is also Tinubu that I mean what has Tinubu got to do with this? The other time they said it was uh, it was Tinubu that said uh, military people should be shooting at uh, Togo. I'm not, listen, I'm not a fan of Tinubu, everybody knows. Tinubu is saying no, I'm not a fan. But that does not mean we should not say the truth. And he has no, but when he was this thing was happening, he was a lot of taking, taking, I mean, taking care of his uh, health. So how will it be, how will it be facilitating that with Tinubu? I don't know whether you also read what uh, uh, former senator Pedro Judu wrote. About this thing, I mean, he, he used that word to water down everything he has done. It, it, it was in the world that I said, Fred Ojudu will never do that. Rather, he will help his, rather he will help his, uh, his uh, personality. So, no, I, don't, I don't like people when they are bringing it in the world to what in the world doesn't know about. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get Liboros back here so we can have uh, another side to this conversation. But uh, going for, forward, I mean, we know that the Fulanese, by reason of President Buhari's ethnic affiliation, are one of the dominant ethnic groups in the country. Now, my next question is, do you see these attacks as an attack of the APC's base, knowing that, you know, the president is also of the APC? Can you hear me? That Do you see these attacks as an attack on the APC or the, on the APC's base? Well, you see, people, people have been speculating so many things. And uh, if you look at, if you look at the, I mean, the governor of the uh, oil state, he's not from APC extract. All right? It's PDP. Even the Kwabio Duma, who is also closer, and the APC person. There was a time he said he never had the goal to come to Ogun State. So the issue of that, it doesn't concern APC or PDP. It is about, it is about the, the bandits that are trying to trouble Nigeria. And we are now saying if the government cannot provide enough security, especially for us in the Southwest, we will handle this in ourselves. So for me, I don't see that as the APC PDP issue. No. Finally, um, back to what Governor El Rufai said. He said that, and I quote, citizens of a particular ethnicity are being massacred. Now I'm trying to understand which ethnicity is being massacred because we hear that some of these um, you know uh, herders have also been injured let's not forget there are cases of cattle rustling and then of course um, I, I visited a community yesterday where uh, the Oba was complaining about um, you know the, the subjects being killed and you know some of them maimed there's seven several amputees right now and they're all blaming uh, these killings and massacres on herders so do you think Governor El Rufai was referring to Fulanese being, um, you know, vilified instead of dealing with the issue of rogue Fulani herders who have taken 
the good name of Fulani headers, you know, into the mud? Learned not to always waste my time with statements of some people. Why is they, they make their statements with some form of biases? Look at the issue of Southern Kaduna. Look at what he said before death that some uh, tens of hundreds of uh, full men have been killed, this and that. Have we been able to provide them, those that were killed? Have we been able to show the public the causes of those people? Even when, when the, the, the trouble now started in Southern Kaduna, what did he do? So, whatever statement he is making now, I see it as it doesn't make it up to because you could see that, especially in the Southwest, we are now winning the war. The tide is now turning against the ethnic. Well, I didn't realize that there was a war. So, what I'm saying is making a just look at it as a rising, a rising of the dark snake. All right. Well, Mr. Dayakayade is a political technocrat. Thank you very much indeed for speaking with us on Plus Politics. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about Quara State APC members who clashed at their registration exercise. We'll be right back.